it for any occasion. So keep patting down, waiting, comics and conversation. Keep the conversation moving along. Keep bringing comics, keep your local store strong. If it's hard, then it's a job for the challenger. Comics and conversation, y'all. From Challengers Comics and Conversation in Chicago, this is Contest of Challengers, a comics industry business podcast with Patrick Brower and W. Dell Bush. Say that again so we can have a public record of it. Uh, this September, Volume 15 of Yotsuba. When you say Volume 15 of Yotsuba, mm-hmm. you mean you're hoping in that the solicit- Volume 15 of Yotsuba comes out. In the Salsa text, it, it specifically says, after three years, <laughs> the new Volume <laughs> of Yotsuba. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, pretty exciting day for uh, fans of Japanese creators. I guess we need to order one less from now on. Yeah, that's fair. I, it's uh, it's three years, but uh, worth the wait. Yeah. Worth the wait. Always worth the wait. So much Yotsuba stuff right in my line of vision. It's a good reason for me to reread the first 14 volumes over the next few months. And also, permanently marred to my body. It's true. I mean, not Yotsuba herself, but... No. Dan Board, you know why? Because Dan Board is a robot. He is a robot. And also, Dan Board is way more the franchise than Yotsuba is, let's be honest. Let's be fair. Sure. Uh, they did a... a Cat Dan Board spinoff animated series, even. Did they really? They did. It's called Neon Board. I mean, I visited Nakama Toys this Monday, mm-hmm. and what did I get for both of us? Uh, was it Tiny Dan Boards? A blind bag, multicolored Tiny Dan Boards. Mm-hmm. Dow, what color was the one you got? Uh, it was purple. What was the one you got? Purple. Yeah. Technically, they were great. Blind boxed, huh? <laughs> yeah, Bl- blind bagged, blind bagged. Yeah. No, they came in little, um, like a little container. Oh right, it was it was like a like a pyramid, like a yeah, yeah like a lunchbox container. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I don't even remember. I don't remember. Hey, Dal. Patrick. Let's say hmm? you're a, you're a person who has ordered a book from a store. You're a person who has ordered a book from a store. Yes. And no, I was doing what you said. I no, I said, said let's say. I, I didn't say it with you. Well, you said it, then I said it. Okay. Go on. Let us suppose mm-hmm. that you are a person who ordered something from a store. Uh-huh. It doesn't have to be a book. It could be anything. Sure. Let's say you ordered a new GoBot toy. Okay. And it comes in. Okay. And the store calls you. Uh-huh. You don't answer because you don't know what the number is. Yeah, I don't answer my phone. Sure. That's why stores leave messages that want you to know things. Sure. And let's say the store were to say, Hello, Dow Bush. This uh-huh. is GoBot Emporium. Uh-huh. The new GoBot you had ordered has come in. It's available to you right now. It costs uh, 65,000 yen. Uh-huh. And we'll hold it for the next fortnight. Okay. What would you then do? Oh, I would definitely call them back and say, hi, you called me? You know what? <laughs> Close. Close. Here, here Who is, is this? I nope, always love nope. when it starts that way. The accusatory, who is this? That's the comic shop where you ordered a comic. Oh, hey, how's it going? Okay, <laughs> I'm going to be a random hypothetical person. Uh-huh. You're going to be the person who works at... Go Bot Emporium. Go Bot Emporium. <laughs> sure. It's always been my dream. <laughs> uh, boop, 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 boop. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hi, this is Dale at GoBot Emporium. Hi, uh, you just called me to tell me that uh, a GoBot that I ordered is in? Okay. So, it, it's in? I believe it is, yes. Yeah, because I got a message just now that said that my GoBot is in. Yep, yep, I'm looking at it. Okay, I, I'll 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 come in soon to get it. Great, thanks. Click. Yeah. Why did you have to call back? Important phone call with all this new information. Nope. <laughs> I mean, it, at least. Sure, you said the they, GoBot was in, but how do I know it's really in? They listened to the message, which super rare. And and thank it's, you, it's, GoBot seriously. lover. The amount of people who have like usually when we're calling on special orders. I'm not calling on one special order. I'm calling on, like, seven. Yeah. So when I call on seven, and then I finish that, and then 15 minutes later, someone calls up and goes, yeah, you just called me? It's like, I I called seven people. Who are you? What is this? Uh, Along those lines, someone came in today 
and came up to the counter, big smile, I'm like, how's it going? They're like, yeah, I'm here to get those books from the other day. Okay. Uh, and I make a motion turning around. I'm like, what was that name again? And they say, I'm like, oh, oh, it's just in the hold box. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't remember every transaction, every hold transaction. Was it somebody you had interacted with? Um, it was someone we had both interacted with. Okay, so it wasn't... But you had put the books on hold. Okay, but you were around for it, so it wasn't like they'd come in on, like, a Monday and then yeah, showed yeah, up on no, a Friday fair. and you're like, I... Who? Fair. But yeah, it was still, it's like, uh, oh, and then, and then I, I got it. Sure. After a second. But there was a previous interaction I had had recently where somebody would have had called to come in and say that very same thing. Sure. Just need a little more information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but on the plus side, there was a club member who today was the first day I was able to remember who they are <laughs> and get their books. But they're still masked. Sure. So as soon as they unmask, I will be clueless. Yeah, it's definitely been a weird transition, uh, the amount of people who are coming in without masks, and I'm kind of not used to the lower parts of their faces. Yeah. So I... I kind of have to just look at the top half and think, who are you? Because the whole face doesn't make any sense to so you me. you just hold your hand up? No, I, <laughs> visually, I'm just, my eyes are just, like, I'm, I'm locked in. I can't, as if the lower part of their face is something I'm not supposed to look at in public, so I just don't let my eyes drift down. I'm just, everything, like, nose like, and above. Like women's exposed ankles. Exactly. At, at a beach. Yes. At a, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... No, that that definitely is, and it's something we had said like a year ago, which is like, boy, we're all going to get used to these masks, and then when you take them off, I'm not going to recognize anybody again. Well, we were talking about this earlier this week with someone as well, that mm -hmm. the act of wearing a mask became so commonplace, Right. but the I, act of, of not wearing a mask, mm -hmm. for me at least, mm -hmm. is immediately more commonplace. Like, for the first week or so, it felt weird, Yeah. but now there are points where I need a mask, and don't have one. Sure. I mean, I always have one in my car, and yeah. I usually carry one on me. I forgot one today. Oof. Uh, so I, I couldn't... Um, like, when I when I got to Dunkin' to grab my order, mm -hmm. I paused at the door. I'm like, it says you need to wear a mask. I'm just going in. I, I didn't have a mask. Yeah, I, when I was in there the other day, they haven't changed their signs at all, so it definitely says you need to wear a mask to come inside. When I went inside, I would say two-thirds of the people were not wearing masks. Okay. All the staff was, but, like, two people sitting at the table weren't wearing a mask. I want to say somebody in line wasn't wearing a mask. I still had mine on. I, I've been pretty good about making sure that I always have a mask on me when I leave the house, just in case. Thankfully, like, for non-work days, the masks I have are, are very easy to kind of ball up and put in a pocket. Um, and then work day ones, I can just put it in my backpack. So if yeah, I need it, it's there. It's, it's just disturbing that you choose to wear one of the Bear Country masks, because those things are horrific, and really don't stop the spread of any diseases. Uh, they do, but they stop me from eating as many picnic baskets, which I appreciate with my figure. Okay. I mean, you could... I, I don't want to put on you that... You could bring the picnic basket home and I don't share. want to put on that COVID-19 picnic baskets. Sure. But there's some good hand sandwiches in those picnic baskets, though. You're probably right. Uh, Bear uh, Bronson has a match against, I want to say, like, All Ego Ethan Page or somebody. Oh, don't care. On Dynamite? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Dynamite? On Dynamite. Ugh. Saturday Night Dynamite. Ethan Page is on Dynamite? It's a big card, apparently. Yes. Uh, there's, uh, also, there's also a segment where somebody, like... Look, Bear Bronson just lost to... Conan's getting interviewed? Uh, oh, God. Because they're set, Well, like, apparently they're setting Conan yeah. up as... The, as uh, the Santana. AAA representative. Well, like, specifically in this news article I was reading, they're, they're setting him up as, like, Santana and Ortiz's Tully Blanchard. Oh, Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I apologize yeah. for jumping the gun and assuming it was... I mean, it could be both. Uh, I don't really know what else they're going to be doing with him, but yeah, the article was very... Uh, he's having a sit-down with... I can't remember who's interviewing him. Uh, Alex Marvez. No, it's like J.R. or Shivani or It should be Alex Marvez. That else. guy needs more work. Can't even remember. He's too much of a patsy. Also jumped away against Kenny Omega for the AEW <laughs> Championship. Yeah, that'll, he'll win that. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Uh huh. And then he'll go on to face Sammy Callahan at Slammiversary mm -hmm. and all those things. Uh, was I finished with masks? I Maybe. was going to say that. I'm sorry to get off on a tangent there with AEW. 
I mean, you you made it about wrestling. I did. I was the one who brought up wrestling first. Yes, mm-hmm. you you were talking about Bear Bronson. I was. You know, I'm I'm a much bigger Bear Boulder fan. True. So thank you for throwing that in my face. Yeah. Um, but there was a guy who had, who who was outside the door with his mask on his chin, smoking, mm-hmm. and then he he did exhale a big puff of smoke and then walked in. So of course it follows him in. Of course. And I was just about to say, hey man, where that. Oh, wait, no, never mind. You don't have to. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, he was a very unpleasant customer to have in the store and did not buy anything, so customer is the wrong word, but... Sure. It was... It was visitor? Uh, yeah, there you go. It was a weird day because of the weather. Yeah, absolutely. This whole week looks pretty gross. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not. I wonder if you'll even make it to uh, Ryan Brown's party. Uh, I want to try. I, to. I can say it because it'll have happened. Yeah, by the time it will, this goes it'll out. already have happened by the time anyone hears. Yeah, it. yeah, I hope to. Um, yeah, it's certainly my intention. But with it being rainy all day and me being on foot, I don't sure, know. there is a potential for a way to make your acquiescence easier. What's that? I I can't say. Okay, you'll have to tell me after the podcast. Uh, basically, somebody is coming by the store who is coming in town just for the party oh so gifts can be uh i mean partly no maybe you could be given a ride if the timing works out maybe i was also they're coming to drop something off for me specifically i was thinking they could just take our gift for ryan brown and take that to the event i mean we could do that it doesn't have his name on it but we could figure that out got markers that's fair. Uh, that, you know what? I'll ask. I'll ask depending yeah. on when, when anyway, they get there. we'll talk about it later. But th- I was informed today that their uh, arrival is a surprise. Okay. So even though the party will have been over. Reginald Bell Johnson. I can't believe he's even in town. Shush. It's a surprise. <laughs> oh, no. Well, that already happened by this point. Anyone hears it. Well, I mean, yeah, the patrons will get it at 8 o'clock. So it'll have it'll be happening. Mm-hmm. No, it'll be over. It'll be over like... Oh, my God. I don't know if I should do this segue. Oh, oh no. it's a rough one. Oh, no. No, it's it's a smooth segue, but it's a uh, sensitive topic. Yes. It'll be over like Warren Ellis's comic book career. Oh, that's apparently never over. Oh. Yeah. So, I didn't know if you wanted to mention this, but I think that I, it, it... I probably would not have, but we can talk about it now. Yeah, I think that it's um, just because of the way things have come back into... Um, the forefront. Sure. Oh, uh, a quick side note. Uh, a a good a good customer, a good club member was in today, and said, uh, "Yeah, I I just got back into listening to your podcast, and I was too busy to even say I'm sorry. the usual. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but there was a book that you guys were talking about. I can't remember what it is, but I'm really interested in it. And then he like looked through his phone, Mother of Madness, and then he said the title <laughs> of the book, and I said, we were definitely not talking about that. He's like, oh, it might have been another podcast. So have you have, have you heard anything about it? Uh, Spawn Universe. No, 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 no I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say the title. Of course, that's fair. I do. Although that's, it's, it's just making me laugh. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so what Dow's referencing is somebody was buying Spawn Universe. For the record, a lot of people were buying Spawn Universe yeah. this past Wednesday. Still, still today, we still have a bunch left though. Well, we ordered a ton. Yeah. And it was there's a minute like, so basically Patrick ordered the the A cover on. Uh, initial order and i think maybe another cover but probably not it might have just been the a cover and then we had some people between initial order and final order cutoff who'd ordered a, a, a few of the variants and it when i did final order cutoff i'm seeing like man we got people who want like two copies of this cover three copies of that cover maybe we should be doing the variants and it's a six dollar one shot so it's like i don't know but spawn's kind of going crazy lately across all different kinds of platforms and medias yeah so it's like i'm gonna do a bunch of these covers and it's got like six covers but I did a bunch, and then it comes in, and I'm like, oh my god, I ordered way too many. We're going to be stuck with this thing forever. And then all day Wednesday, people are buying like as many copies as we would let them, basically. Yeah, we would have been sold out early if we hadn't enforced our limits. Yeah, it was pretty weird. Like, it, it worked out in our favor, for sure, but it was still this this real anxiety of like, oh my god, this I'm going to be staring at 50 copies of a $6 book for the rest of my life. So this uh, this excited... Spawn fan comes up to the counter with uh-huh. his with his book, and says, "Have you a chance to read this?" We're like, "No." He's like, "Yeah, I'm just curious if it's any good or if it's." And I said, "Spawn." And you laughed. And I did laugh because it's mean. Because it's <laughs> funny. 
And then this guy. And he goes, uh, hey, I, like, I've been reading Spawn, you know, since the beginning. And I go, oh, then, so you know. I couldn't you, help it. You didn't give him an out. I couldn't help it. You didn't do it like a, well, oh, sure, yeah. I mean, if you're a Spawn fan, like, you were just like, no, it's still Spawn. I usually go out of my way to not... Trash a book somebody's buying? Trash a book somebody's <laughs> buying. For $6 that they're actually excited about? And to be fair, <laughs> I didn't read it. You, you're not going to read it. Neither of us is going to read it. Are no, you serious? But You'd have to pay me the $6. You, <laughs> when you hold up a silver platter like that... Because the, the key thing that Patrick is kind of... Maybe missing for the the for my take on the punchline is that the guy left this ellipsis. Yeah, after it, it, good, it just, you didn't like jump in. He was just like, if it's good or and there's this pause, and you volunteered spawn, <laughs> and that's what really made the joke land. Was the timing on it was really good. I mean, good enough that I'm so proudly talking. Oh about sure, it now. I, we were talking about it later that day, and then like. A day or two later. Uh, but I did take the wind out of the sails of this club member with this new image book he was asking about. Oh, yeah? And I said, I will happily put you down for the first issue. You want to check it out? And he said, I'll, I'll look at it when it's on the stands. Are you guys going to, you guys are ordering it? And I go, a couple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you heard anything about it? Like, oh, no, I've seen it. Oh, you've read it? Oh, I'm not going to read it. <laughs> Oh, wow, yeah, I don't even know which one this could be. And I could I could tell, uh, I'm like, oh, rein it in, rein it in. Uh-huh. Uh, let's put it this way. It is a book that you would not read the preview of. Sure. And you read the preview of Mother of Madness. I did. Well, I mean, I like, like I've mentioned before, I like those creators, and I was interested sure. in seeing what they would come up with, uh, and I did not like the result. <laughs> so there was a... Do you know they're doing a 1 in 500 signed Amelia yeah. Clark variant? Yes. I don't know if we should go for that or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's an audience. For are there Amelia Clark fans who, who are going to want to buy? Is it returnable? Probably. There was an interview <laughs> with somebody from Forbidden Planet and Amelia Clark. Uh huh. And I always love celebrity Zoom interviews. Sure. Because they get to pick the backdrop to their house. Sure. So she's in front of a bookshelf on an angle, and the books it's a, it's just regular bookshelf, but the books are. Uh, the thing that you hate with so many books that some will go on the top. Oh and yeah, yeah. It's it's all like perpendicular angles and stuff. And and she's just Ugh. a little bit too low in the frame, so there's a lot of empty space. It's for people who don't read their books; they're just decorations. But that's uh, there was Seth Meyers had a, a bit with um, Rudy Giuliani's kid who was doing. He he filmed a video of himself angrily being outraged about his father losing his license. Uh huh. But in the in the frame of the the horizontal frame of the video, uh -huh. uh, his head was like in the lower third of the middle. Okay, and it was just like dead space around him. Oh yeah, and Amelia Clark framing. was bad just framing. a little bit, just a, a hair too low. Well, she's tiny. She's sure. a tiny lady. But she set up her own camera. You know, she could she could change it. I think she got the the tallest chair she could possibly <laughs> buy, and she was still too but low. The, in the frame. point is, the guy from Forbidden Planet, an, mm -hmm. an older interviewer, who had read the book. And was quoting the book back to her, uh -huh. was raving about it and said it was, quote, fucking amazing. Sure. People, are, it's going to find fans. I okay. Don't, I don't doubt that. It's just, it's so different from your review. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, and it's. There's a way to do an interview where you're like, I read the book. I, I enjoyed this part or whatever. But, like, he, you, you would have thought that dude was, was uh, reviewing Saga. Sure. And or, then, to make it more topical to this podcast, Yotsuba. Or Six Sidekicks is Trigger Heat. Sure. Yeah, of course. Uh, which fourth issue was so good? Yeah. It, so I mean, there's there's kind of two things to Mother Madness. If I can keep get burying this book uh, <laughs> on the week of FOC, it basically like so there's a, a a formal layer where it's how they're telling their story, and then there's kind of the thematic layer, which is like what the story is about. Um, I found the thematic layer to be incredibly difficult to discern. Like I couldn't figure out what story they were trying to tell or why they were trying to tell it. Uh, and then the formal layer was so distracting and aggravating that I couldn't be bothered to dig further to find out what I was not getting on the thematic layer. Like, it didn't work for me on two different levels. Was it funny? There are some jokes in there, but okay, it's... Okay, because she said it was very funny. Amelia Clark did? Yeah. The creator of the book said it was funny? Yeah. Wow. Well, in that case, um, th it, there are jokes, but it's it's a problem of too much of everything. 
there's jokes after jokes after jokes after jokes, and there's no breaks. There's no uh, modulation. It's just constantly trying to show you how funny it is, and that makes it kind of not funny. I didn't care for it. That said, there's a signed copy for, for if you order 500 copies, and I'm thinking this thing is is inevitably going to be Project Starring Amelia Clark. It's the only reason it exists. Sure. I would not be surprised if the day of release there was not a press release saying that Netflix or Hulu or whomever uh, had optioned it and is currently in production on the uh, movie, TV show, whatever, starring Amelia Clark, produced by Amelia Clark. On that level, does it make it something where, you know, a 500 copy alt variant signed by Amelia Clark, the various other incentive variants, plus the idea that this is a, a media project, make ordering 500 copies of a first issue on a hopefully a returnable basis worth doing. Do you have a tax return to put up? I do not anymore. Technically, we didn't either. Yeah. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> joke's on you. <laughs> joke is definitely on me. We did not have one then either. Dell, let me just tell you this. Patrick. We took a big swing with Berserker number one. We did. And what was the result? It paid off. Right. Yeah. What's the challenger's role? Oh, yeah. I mean, and the key thing with this one that I do want to mention is the Berserker, we actually believed in the project. Yeah. Uh, we reached for the Keanu Reeves variant and found out that all the other incentive variants uh, did not sell, for yes. the most part, yeah. uh, because there are a billion of them on the market. Sure. But, like, this is a lower number, and assuming it's returnable, we know how image returnability works, and it's a thing where, like... I, I wonder if that won't... Oh, I, you know what? I don't know, Dal. I don't know, because doing the order that we, ju we just turned in, mm -hmm. like, I turned in... Uh, yesterday in the real world. In the real world. As we're recording. As we're recording. There were so many boom books that had no returnability because this is the start of the new diamond terms for returnability. Oh, sure, right. And how many does Mother of Madness have more than one cover? Yeah, it has all those incentive variants. Yeah. You just mentioned it. I can't keep track. So, so those probably. those will not be returnable. Let me take a look. I'm going to go to the diamond side Okay, fast. You, you can do that. I and can do that. I I'm not that. saying... I don't want to do it. I'm saying I don't want to do it. But oh, <laughs> then why are we doing this? Because I'm mostly just asking if you feel like there's something there. No. Okay. Also, Keanu Reeves is a much bigger name to the general public. Yeah, that's the thing about this. Amelia that, Clark. That I really mean, had what, me what did her? Uh, what did what did her Christmas movie do? Was that the one with um, Snake Eyes? Snake Eyes, Henry Golding. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look. That at was this. A, a vehicle for Image, her. Image No Risk Number One Title. Huh. It's also six dollars because it is fifty-two pages. Because again, there's no brevity to this. There's yeah. no editing. It's just more content. Okay, so do the math. Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, I mean, quietly to yourself. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll cover. Yeah. I mean, you, I was, you, I was you and I can but, both do it. But no, I'm letting you do it. You have a thing sure. in your hands. Okay. I I have it in my head. I mean, it's there's no math to it. I mean, just you can round up to a oh, we are rounding a up. Solid number. See, I'm, I would I would take into account all the the half percentage points just to make sure oh okay i mean it, it's yeah and this this is i'm not saying do the math so we can talk about it. i'm saying sure. I, do I the math even over your head and if you think that's worth it oh yeah i i mean it's, also one of the perks not perks one of the pluses for the without any extra variance this Ber is the number one berserker number one okay was the ability to get it cgc directly yeah well this is something i mean i don't know that a one in 500 signed amelia clark variant is worth CG saying beyond just like let's just sell it. I mean, I think that's how you sell it for more money if it's okay. CGC. But yeah, sure. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let Maybe me, Image let will me offer that. Ultimately, put it to you mm -hmm. this way. Okay. I don't do Image FOCs. It's true. Yeah, I don't really want to do it mostly because okay. I, I like Berserker was an easy book to hand sell. People would look at it and they go, ah, and we go, no, it's actually really good. Like. It's, uh, you know, Matt Kent, and it's Ron Garney, and it's a pretty fun action comic, and, and there's look, some really good stuff in while there. While it would be hypocritical of us to do the deep dive on a book we don't necessarily oh, like. Oh, my God, I'm okay being a hypocrite on this. But, but the point is... I care a lot of stuff we, I don't care about. Exactly. That's my point. That's my point. <laughs> like, we don't have to love a book to be able to sell it. Did I just it. mention the, the six covers of Spawn Universe that we ordered a ton of? Yeah, there you go. I mean, like, my, my point... Also a $6 book. Yeah, right. Uh, but my, if it's a $6 book and it's that thick, mm -hmm. I don't want to pick up books that day. No. 
My point with the Mother of Madness thing isn't necessarily that, like, it's a great book and we can move a ton of copies of it so much as, like, is there an audience for this thing? Between, she is doing press on it. Like, Image sent us a thing today saying, oh, she's going to be on The Tonight Show, she's going to be on some other thing. You know who she's not going to be on? Conan. Conan O'Brien. Sea Dog, as they called him. Coco. <laughs> Coco, that's true. Do you want to look on eBay right now, see if there's anything? No, I don't. I mean, uh, I could check later, but sure. it's... Sure. Yeah. It's mostly just the idea of, is there potentially an audience there between people who might be fans of hers, potential good reviews, it's clearly not out of their own possibility. It's Pe- from Forbidden Planet, loved it. People who are going to pick up image number ones no matter what, and then people who want to grab an issue one for something that's going to be turned into a movie or a TV show. Like, yeah. do those four quadrants make it worth... I mean, I, I can't... There's no world that we sell 500 copies. No. But, I mean, is there a world that we sell 150? 200? I don't know. We pushed Berserker pretty hard and sold a very small percentage of That's those true. thousand comics. That's true. But this would only be 500. It'd be significantly less. Sure. However, it's triple the size of Berserker, so it's going to take up more room. Yeah. I'm saying, how many more, box- how many more boxes do you want to live on top of the red <laughs> bookshelves? Zero. There you go. I'm not saying no. I'm saying think about it. I mean, well, how the, how well, many... the problem is I'd have to think about it for the next uh, day. 27 hours, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but I mean, how many variant covers? How many? They're, they're doing a few more variants. Like, there's a couple open order variants and a bunch of incentive variants. Yeah. Um, I, not to the level of Berserker, for sure, but certainly to, like, a higher level than your average image book that isn't published by Todd McFarlane. Let's do it, but let's only get the C cover. I really hate the A cover. Especially hate the yeah. A cover. Oh, my God. That is the A cover with the like the balaclava and the button and it, a hand. It looks it's, it's it looks so to me bad. like like a the cross between uh you know those little stress balls, like the stress people you squeeze? <laughs> sure. And um where the eyes bug out. Yeah, and a blow up doll. <laughs> sure. Speaking of blow up dolls. Uh oh. Uh no, vinyl. Vinyl oh, is right. excellent. Yeah, okay. Did you read it? I didn't. I okay. I remember reading plastic when I came out and enjoying it. Uh, it is in this. It's the same creators of plastic in the same universe. It's the same universe, but I mean, I keep saying that to people, but sure. they're not connected. That was a, a thing that John Allison, John Allison, when he was doing By Night, people were like, "Is this in the uh, the, the Giant Days universe or the whatever his name for the Bad Machinery universe?" And he's like, "Yeah, but these characters are in the U.S. as opposed to Giant Days characters are in the U.K." That's like saying, "Like we all live in the Charlize Theron universe." We do, but you're not going to run into her. Yeah. Yep. Oh, guess who came in today? Oh, no. No. Was she promoting F9? Yes. Okay. Is she in that one? I heard Don't she care. has a cameo appearance in it. There's been a lot of writing and, and promotion for the new Fast and the Furious. So, Vinyl, Vinyl is about a serial killer who's a very nice man who needs to very, form... Very nice, very evil. Basic, very, very <laughs> nice, very evil. Who basically needs to form the Justice League of Serial Killers... To save the FBI agent that has been chasing him his whole career, who gets in trouble because he, the serial killer, mistakenly thinks they're best friends. That's cute. Right? That's a good story. And everybody wanted that teddy bear cover. They really did. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely more striking. It, it is. It, I, I like, it's a great cover, uh, of the A and the B cover. It's the same cover, but... Uh, when this dude kills, he wears a teddy bear mask. Sure. So they just put the mask on him for the B cover, mm-hmm. and we should have just ordered the B cover. Yeah, sometimes we do that. Yeah. It's not or like John Romita like, Jr. do the A cover, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing I did for Superman uh, Blue and... <laughs> Club only yep. for the John Romita yep. Jr. cover. Sure. Mostly because when you see John Romita Jr. covers from DC, you mostly just spend a lot of time like pointing them out and going, what is going on on this cover? Yeah. I don't know what's happening. So at least you saved yourself that when people would bring it up to the counter. So vinyl, Spoiler, no one brought it up to the counter. Vinyl is excellent. I highly recommend it. Yeah. Wrestling Anonymous, please hold. Hey, this is AEW wrestler Colt Cabana, and I have a new weekly podcast called Wrestling Anonymous featuring you, the wrestling fan, telling me your stories. 
Are they funny? We go in the liquor store, in walks Jerry Flynn and Horace Hogan. Are they sad? Two weeks before he passed away, he wanted to uh, put our tag team back together. Are they bizarre? Haku stretched out my little child, <laughs> as weird as it sounds. Most importantly, let's make them real. I lost my mom when I was 14. Wrestling has always been my comfort zone. Subscribe to Wrestling Anonymous wherever you listen to your podcasts and let me become a part of your weekly podcast routine once again, thanks. And now we're going to work our way back to Warren Ellis. Oh, no. Because, uh, well, it, it came out, and I'll do this one if you don't want to. It came out this week via Ben Teppelsmith mm-hmm. that his collaboration with Warren Ellis fell, which was a, a detective series-ish mm-hmm. um, that hasn't been published in, I don't know, 12 years? How long? A very long time. A while. Is coming back. It'll be published by Image. And this will be the first Warren Ellis work that has come out since all of his toxic behavior was revealed. Yeah, I mean, unless you count Batman's Grave, which DC kept publishing. Yeah, but I mean, that was already done. Yeah. I but... think this is the first thing he's he's done new. It, you're right, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's it, a it does not matter. It is a distinction, though. Yeah, definitely. And we don't think that it's time for Warren Ellis to come back. Because I don't know that there is time for him to come back. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable um, putting on the stands a Warren Ellis comic. We've uh, slowly... Uh, I mean, we, we kept carrying Batman's Grave, so that's on just, us. Just till it ran out, but because of Still, all the people that were... I mean, we could have made a club only immediately, and we didn't. And I, I kind of regret that a little bit. Um, we've been n- not reordering Warren Ellis graphic novels that sell out. So, to the people who come in looking for Transmetropolitan because they heard it was good, it was good. I don't feel comfortable selling it. And yeah, I mean, this is going to be a thing that that every store is going to have to make up their own mind. I I wish Image had made up their own mind and decided not to do this. Um, That's their thing that they're going to have to live with. Yeah, uh, Warren Ellis hurt a whole lot of people, and I don't feel like he's done nearly enough to redeem himself. So no, I do not feel comfortable carrying Uh, Up until the statement (coughs) he released yesterday, Mm -hmm. he hadn't even apologized a year later. Nope. And look, I mean... It's like if... uh, it's not it, it's it's not this terrible passive aggressive apology like I'm if sorry, you I'm were walking <laughs> past you and I shove you uh-huh. and you're like hey and I go I'm sorry you were in my way uh-huh. that's not an apology uh, no it's not great yeah it, so but he he didn't do that he didn't his his was more I'm trying to think of a way that that I could explain it using your example um, it's more like if he and I were walking past each other and he shoved me and I went hey you shoved me and he went. It wasn't my intention to shove you. I'm sorry if you got shoved. I don't think uh, I have that kind of strength to shove you. Uh, that, I, didn't, I wasn't aware that, that I had the ability that's in any something, way. That's something I'm going to have to live with. I'm trying to be a better person about not shoving people. And it's like, you shoved me. You still did it. And you're explaining how you feel about that. And that's, yeah. you know, I'm good for your therapist. But that's not helping it's not solving the problem it's just making this situation about your feelings and the problem is warren ellis shoved dozens upon dozens Uh, upon dozens of people over decades yeah um and then yeah uh yeah so in general um i i don't want to get into the whole thing about like canceling people or whatever uh certainly the 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 various people who spoke up about warren ellis have said that the point of this was not to like erase warren ellis from existence so much as it was to be honest about what he was doing and give him the opportunity to be a better person about this, to, to make amends. To be the person they always thought he was. Yeah. So certainly him going radio silent for a year and then only coming back, what what he claims is inconveniently, uh, when a, a series that he was bringing back to press got announced, is not great. It's not a great look. It certainly doesn't make it seem like he is uh, honest about making changes and, and redeeming himself in the eyes of all of the people that he hurt. Uh, let alone the fans that believed in him and and have dealt with their own disappointment in Warren Ellis as a person. I'm not saying it can never happen. It's not, frankly, on me to decide whether or not Warren Ellis has made amends with the people he's hurt. That's for them to to let us know. If and when that happens, sure. I would carry Warren Ellis stuff again. I don't yeah, think he's done nearly enough, and I don't think he's there yet. And so, no, not, not going to yeah, carry we're, for we're the We're not saying though. never, but no. we're, we're, we're definitely saying not now. Yeah, yeah. That's probably not ever. Yeah, I mean, it, certainly, I'm not seeing the last year as a great roadmap for a guy that's going to turn it all around. Can I still say that I'm I'm yeah. surprised that, and I'm not saying they had to, but I thought that Boom would have come out with some sort of 
they're really not mentioning Joss Whedon at Joss all. Joss Whedon <laughs> announcement. <laughs> they're yeah. really not. Yeah. It's very strange. It, it continues to be strange to me that they are still developing Joss Whedon properties. Yeah. With their 20th Century Fox license. And it's just like, man, it, you put a great big old created by Joss Whedon on the, on the front of a lot of your books. And, I mean, it's still selling. People are still buying them. Yeah. yeah even Fire uh -huh. Not off the rack. No. Well, we don't care for the rack. We tried with the new verse. That was a mistake. Yeah. Which, I don't know, I mean, is Joss Whedon someone whose books we shouldn't be carrying anymore? Is that a thing? I mean, it's... It's just that Buffy means so much to so many people. Yeah, and, and I guess that's sort of the thing is, like, anyone who's going to be, like, upset at us, hypothetically, for not carrying a creator's books because of our inability to feel like we want to support that creator in light of their actions... It's a moving target, and it's not something where we have a set criteria. There's not a checklist that we go through with every book that we carry to make sure it's an ethical book. I mean, look, we still stock Flash Rebirth. Yeah. We, uh, oh, Van Skyver? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's true. But also, don't you like Nathan <laughs> Fillion? And also Jeff Johns. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I don't want to do like a, a, a sliding scale thing where like, eventually everyone's gross. Uh, but there are levels that I can't live with as someone who has... The ability, like a lot of fans, to vote with their dollar. There's a level I don't want to vote with my dollar for a creator that I find uh, abhorrent. And I, I find the things they've done to be, uh, if not criminal, then definitely, like, inhuman. So, yeah, it, Warren Ellis is a guy that I don't feel like I want to stock his books. But a project that Joss Whedon had a hand in that might still profit from but doesn't directly control, I guess, is okay. Yeah. Nothing I'm going to feel like I want to promote. We're not going to ever do like a big like, let's do a huge buy-in on this new Joss Whedon thing. It's just like, we'll carry token copies for the fans that still want to read it. That's it. I mean, that's all we we can do. We can, we can stock our shelves with our conscience. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Just after we finished recording this week's episode, Image Comics released a statement about Fell. And basically they are... They're putting on hold. They're not going to publish it until Warren Ellis has made amends to the people that he has harmed. We didn't want to just put out our podcast as recorded, especially since Dow didn't really want to talk about the Warren Ellis thing anyway. But we figured the least we could do is point out that it is now on hold and not going ahead as planned. Maybe one day. I don't know. But uh, I applaud Image for this stance and for releasing this public statement. Hey, Patrick. Should we start hey, yo. hoarding mm -hmm. Hawkeye trades? So uh, in the new catalog, uh, Marvel is doing a Hawkeye, what do they call it? Like the story of Barton and Bishop, which collects Hawkeye 1 to 22 by okay. Matt Fraction, David Aha, okay. Annie Wu, as well as the Young Avengers Bishop thing that uh, okay. Matt Fraction did with Alan Davis. Yeah. And I think maybe the Generations Hawkeye and Hawkeye thing. Okay. All in one book. Okay. Uh, the weird thing is they're giving it two covers. One, a standard David Aha, the Clint Barton shooting an arrow. My life is a weapon. Yeah. And then one, and I cannot believe this is the A cover, Alex Ross, the Hawkeye cover he just did, where it's the full costume. Oh, man. Which doesn't appear in the book at all. No. On anybody. <laughs> okay, so... Revising my question. We should order a ton of that, yes. Should we order a ton of that? Yeah, huh? I mean, like, 50 copies. Probably, yeah. Here's a funny Just thing. Just to make sure it's still in... Because that's not that series doesn't come out until next year, right? Pff, who knows? Uh, I can't remember when it was scheduled for. I think they finished filming it, but Disney won't even give a date for it, probably until, like, a month or two out. Okay. Funny thing, though, when I was doing the rear to this past week, uh, went to Hachette, plugged in a title, and found out, oh, they still have Loki, Agent of Asgard, Complete Collection in stock. Oh. So I ordered this many copies. Wow. Okay. Because I'm like, well, that'll maybe last us three weeks. So the hashtag order that came in today, when was that placed? Uh, a week ago Wednesday. Okay. It takes that long. Sure. Like, we won't get the thing I just ordered this past Wednesday, two days ago, until probably next, next Friday. Friday. Uh, you want to hear a miracle? Although I just paid for it now, so maybe not. The thing with that last hashtag order... They were closed for Juneteenth, so I didn't get to pay for it until Monday, which means it didn't show up until Friday. But okay. this one I paid for on Friday, okay. so maybe, maybe it'll show up like early? Tuesday or Wednesday? Maybe. Anyway, sorry. The box came up in typical Hatchet fashion uh -huh. with uh, one corner, like the, the diagonal corners, uh -huh. split wide open. Uh -huh. You could just reach your hand in and it's grab like stuff. Terrible boxes that can't handle the weight. No packing material except for like one piece of paper, yeah. probably. Everything was fine. 
that's great. I mean, there was there was uh, there were there were two judgment calls. I'm like, these are these are good enough. Yeah, because doing returns with Hashed is such a hassle. Yeah. That it, unless it's like I cannot sell this, we just do what we can. Yeah, it's ridiculous how yeah. badly they show up. But yeah, it was. Uh, are, are we going to put Ingram in as a as a distributor? No. So the thing with Ingram and why I'm not putting them in as a distributor. Um, is because the other people are in as distributors because frequently I will have to order books before the last order came in. So we need some way to track in the system what I've already ordered for them. Oh, but it doesn't matter because Ingram will never be an initial order. Ingram will never be an initial order, will never back order stuff, and they come in in like two days. Yeah. So it's, if anybody else had the same criteria, I wouldn't need to put them in the system. But because it can take over seven days and we back order stuff, I've got to have them in the system. Gotcha. That's why Ingram wasn't in there. Okay. Just just double checking. Yeah, I figured. I think I mentioned that before, but I don't think I went into that much detail. Okay. And I, I don't remember things. Yeah, it was probably like on a Tuesday where it, it got mentioned, or a Wednesday when I was doing the order. I'm like, hey, I'm doing an Ingram one, and you're like, is it going to be in there? And I went, no. And then we were both working. And I'm like, why? And you would not tell me. You and refused. I'm like, it's none of your business. You outright refuse. And I'm Let like, Let me run my store. My, it's my <laughs> store, too. I mean, clearly, it's just my podcast, That's true. As, as was mentioned on the little video that the mm-hmm. Phonation people came in to do for the, the Kickstarter, which uh, ends at this when we're recording an hour and ten minutes, mm-hmm. and I don't think it's going to make it. By this point, people are far too late to, to fund it or get their copies. There you go. But I was pretty happy with the, uh, the JVO had texted and said, hey, can you do a, a quick video today? I'm like, sure. And then when Zach came in to film it, it, I said, what do you want me to say? And he said, whatever. I'm like, all right. Mm -hmm. Done in one take. Yep, cut a promo. Cut a promo, moved on. Moved on. And and, and Zach was like, oh, so were you practicing that as soon as uh, JVO messaged you? I'm like, no. I was working. Yeah, it's a little insulting when people do that. Yeah. Like when people think you're doing material or something. It's like, no, I just came up with this. I'm just this good. On the spot. And uh, looking, listening to it, I think it's a little too fast. I do think I talk a little too fast, but... Uh, it sounded good to me. I wasn't watching it, but obviously I could overhear it. Sure. Uh, it sounded clean and clear to me. Thanks. And I, it was it was almost a heel promo. <laughs> almost. Almost, but almost. just, just uh, authentic enough. Yeah, I was... You, were, you cut a tweener promo. I was real pleased with it. <laughs> you know what I don't know if I'm actually pleased with? What's that? The new direction for The Amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Man Beyond. Spider-Man Beyond. Brought to you by the Beyond Corporation. It is, uh, as as we were talking about last week, and we were hypothetically saying, who's going to replace Nick Spencer? And I think I specifically said, they're definitely going to be a new number one. It's definitely going to be a big name creator. <laughs> and then they did the exact opposite. It is number 75. Uh-huh. It is a team of five writers. Uh-huh. Uh, none of them are huge. Yeah, I think uh, several of them are good, but yeah. none of them are like A-listers. It's, uh, right. I, I see, I thought of that, but then I'm like, I'm going to hold back from saying they're not A-listers. They're not. I mean, they're they're just not. Like, I, they're people who are good. Uh, Kelly Thompson's in there, and Kelly Thompson's someone who's part of their... I can't remember, like, what they were calling their... Are they still architects, or were they Storm, something else? Stormbreakers? I don't know. No, Stormbreakers are the artists. I know. Yeah, I... But Kelly Thompson was somebody where they were like, she's gonna be huge. Um, and she's been on projects, uh, still on Captain Marvel, uh, did a Deadpool run that lasted nine issues. No, ten issues. Um, did, it, did it officially end? Or it officially it, did, ended. Okay, I didn't know if it was stealth ending. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't really paying attention to it because Marvel frequently does not do a great job of saying, "Hey, we've ended a series." Yeah. Um, but I looked at the end of the second collection, and there is a thing at the bottom of the last art page that says, "This is someone else's book now." Uh, but obviously, they have not announced a new Deadpool series since it ended uh, with a King in Black tie-in. Um, but it's her, it's Solid and Ahmed uh, from Miles Morales, Spider-Man, and, and the, the recently ended Ms. Marvel series. Yep. Uh, it is Zeb Wells from Hellions, uh, and not nonstop Spider-Man, that's Joe Kelly. I usually have to do that in my brain of like, oh, Zeb Wells does that Spider-Man book. Nope, that's Joe Kelly. Right. It's a different one. Um, it's, uh, God, what is the, Cody something? Yeah, uh, Cody something who is a story editor over on Rick and Morty, but also doing a lot of the Disney Plus She-Hulk yeah. writing. Um, and then uh, Patrick Gleason, who is one of the contributing artists to the current yeah Spider-Man the Nick Spencer run. Spider-Man series. He was the A artist. He for does the all half? of the webhead covers. Yeah, he is also writing and drawing. Uh, 
portions of the now thrice monthly Amazing Spider-Man book going back to three times a month starting with issue 75. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. They're dropping down from four to three. Yeah. I, I assume they'll still manage uh, a giant size here and there to yeah. bump it up to every week for a month or point issues that can come out simultaneous with a regular full numbered issue. Uh, we've already had club members say, please stop my subscription <laughs> uh-huh. at number 74. Yeah. Um, so that's a few changes. The creative team is changing. The uh, frequency of releases is changing. Like It's going back to like brand new day. Uh, yeah, kind of. And the, the costume well, is changing. Was, where's Zeb Wells was part of that, wasn't he? He was, yeah, yeah. back in that one. Uh, it was him and Dan Slott and Mark Wade. Yeah. Um, the, the suit is changing. And Christos Gage. Uh, I don't love the new suit. It, the spider emblem is off-center. So you're not the only person to mention how frustratingly annoying that is. Uh, but this it's basically the most recent superior Spider-Man suit mm-hmm. with the spider emblem to the left. Yeah, so it's got the thing where like the spider emblem... Like the legs on the spider branch out to the sides and start filling in the black on the costume. Yeah, the legs are the negative space. Yeah, so it, it has that connective tissue instead of just being like a centerpiece and then webs and stuff around it in the red and blue. It's going a little bit of a darker design, a little bit. Um, sort of the Superior Spider-Man suit, but also, uh, weirdly, the Ben Riley suit, which is less weird when you consider that Ben Riley is also Spider-Man in the Amazing Spider-Man book. Yep. Starting with issue 75, and that was the other huge reveal. Um, so yeah, they're changing a ton. Uh, they... Marvel has not announced why Ben Riley is Spider-Man. Uh, or Mar- how, because he was the villain in Clone Conspiracy. He was the new Jackal. Yeah. He was also, which news to Patrick, uh, the Scarlet Spider that's currently appearing in Iron Man. <laughs> Look, the Scarlet Spider had a book recently, Very recently. and it was Kane. Was that the uh, the San Francisco one? Was he in San Francisco in that one? West Coast somewhere? Uh, well, Superior Spider-Man was also was San Francisco. Was it? Okay, maybe but, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. But, but Sc- uh, Scarlet Spider was out west yeah yeah so that was that was kane in the scarlet spider role now that there's a scarlet spider who's been in iron man i just assumed it was kane yeah he was in his mask the whole time the so whole it's time. easy to assume that yeah but no according to marvel the scarlet spider that has been appearing in iron man is actually ben riley who is now going to be spider-man uh again they haven't really said why my theory is that uh we're gonna see mary jane and peter get together at the end of issue 74 and take a hiatus uh that's what's led to Ben Riley taking over Spider-Man before is Peter going, I gotta work on my relationship. I can't be here right now. Yeah, but in the the Beat article, they talked about how what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man is you keep piling on and piling on and piling on and to see how much he can take. Sure. Well, what if you're piling on and piling on and he can't take it as well as somebody else who has the same background and the same power set as he does? Sure. So I, I don't think it's going to be him like, yeah, I'm going to go away. It's him like, I can't do this anymore crying because Howard the Duck is dead. Um, yeah, it, it, there's also a theory that Peter dies in 74, and that's why Ben Riley has to take over. Okay. I mean, it's a death in a Spider-Man comic. It just means he'd be back in like eight months, which is, for the record, when I think this whole experiment's going to wrap up. Uh, I feel like the Ben Riley and the Thrice Monthly and this five-member creative team is leading us up to issue 100. They'll do a big blow-off, and then next summer there will be a big new number one with a new solid writer could be one of the people who's working out now i also think that maybe they're using this as a bit of a tryout to see whose stories connect the most with the audience who comes up with the most marketable concepts who's somebody that you can hand the franchise to because for spider-man you have to think of it as a franchise it has to be able to have spin-off books and create new costumes they can merchandise sure and do all that stuff um you can't just be like i've got an idea for spider-man you have to have 50 ideas for five different spider-mans i like, mean They've never made a superior Spider-Man Marvel Legend, but I'm sure I would buy it if they did. Haven't they not? I don't... Not that costume, I don't oh, okay. think so. I'm sure they'll get around to it. And I'm sure they'll do... Like, do you think they'll do as... Uh, they may. A Marvel Legends for the Dustin Weaver costume? Oh, eventually, yeah. I think yeah. all that stuff will just eventually crop up in something. It could be something where they land on it for, like, a GameStop exclusive or, yeah. some, or Walmart. Somebody who is fine getting something that is not necessarily a huge thing. The real question is, do I buy the Sylvie action figure? I did not like the face sculpt on that. No. I did not think it looked like the actor at all. However, nobody liked the Scarlet Witch Marvel Legends figure when it was shown off. Mm-hmm. But when it came out, looks great. Looks just like Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah, blew off the show. But so many people had said, oh no, the Marvel Select is way better. You did. No, no, I, w- I was. Did the, you not? I, I was. Thought... I was the only one who was the opposite. Really? Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Was it Gina who wanted the Marvel Select yes. one? I thought that was maybe yes. the discussion I'm half remembering. That is what you're half remembering. But she also really liked the Marvel Legends yeah. sculpt when it came out. Yeah, I don't think it's wrong to roll the dice on the Sylvia one if you think that the rest of it looks okay. But to me, the face sculpt was so not representative that... I mean, I, I'm not the audience for it anyway. I was never going to buy it. But sure. I still was like, oh, like, they kind of didn't nail that as much as I thought they would have, considering how good they've gotten with all of their MCU likenesses on their action figures. Well, the variant Hawkeye... Uh, Hawkeye, where did that come from? What? Weird. Wow. The variant Loki figure... The TVA variant? Yeah. One? Okay. And yeah, not, like... The, okay, let me rephrase that. The Loki figure from the Loki TV series where he's in the jacket uh-huh. with the word variant across the back. His hair is doing this weird swoop thing like it's yeah. in mid-motion, but he the figure just stands there. Yeah, I, I don't know if... I can't remember for sure, but I don't think when they were showing off that figure, um, when they were announcing that wave, if they showed the back of it. I feel like the... They the, did not. The part that said variant they did not want to no. talk about, so they sure. didn't show it at all. Right. Which is kind of neat. I think that makes the figure cooler, because when you see it the first time, it's just like, he just looks like some dude who works in an office, and it's like, oh, this is such a boring figure, but when it has variant on the back, it's like, now it's a cool figure. Right. <laughs> uh, this week, Kent, uh, our Kent, from Doom Code Signs... Now he's our Kent. ...had a, a figure he's been working on for a long time just shipped. Okay, great. It's the... Uh, I don't know how they... If, they, if it's called a cabbie... But it's basically the goofy cop car that's on fire. Okay. And it's a collaboration with Crocodile Jackson, who, um, you know, I don't know who's who's doing what in, with this, but it's okay. Doom Code. Doom Code. <laughs> Doom Code Designs. I can't even not say Doom Code Signs. Doom, Doom Code, Code Signs and <laughs> Crocodile Jackson, and the figure came out. So Crocodile Jackson was uh, posting photos and things all over Instagram for it and got flagged. There's specific things you can't say on Instagram or can't show. Really? One of them is the acronym ACAB. Really? Yep. Oof. Uh, so Kent had a post after the fact up, and in every, because it's a series of photos, every photo he had to cover the flames on the car. Oh my gosh. Uh, the, my favorite one was where he did a, a Dragon Ball Super Saiyan. No, that's Super Saiyan hair. That's not fun. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's weird. It's weird censorship in, in that regard. It's very weird and how you have to get around that. It's, I'm sure I told this story before, but there was um, a Transformers action figure named Six Shot. And when he was originally released in the 1980s, one of his modes, he had six modes, that was his name, was as a, uh, like a, a space gun, a little laser gun. When they went to re-release the figure with a, a new sculpt uh, in the 2010s, uh, they had a huge problem, which is, oh, you can't have one of the modes be a gun, but, like, you can't not have it be a gun because that's iconic. Like, yeah. people aren't going to want the figure if wasn't it doesn't me- represent Was it Megatron a gun? Megatron was, but he's been a tank forever. That, that basically, in the late mid-'90s, uh, they just decided he's just a tank forever now. But Six Shot, it's one of the six modes, so you can't, like, you can't skip it. You can't redo it a different way, or it's not really the figure people want anymore. It'd be compromised in a way that would hurt its marketability, but you also can't market it as a space gun. So what they did was they took the space gun, flipped it upside down, and went, submarine. (laughs) Okay. And so everyone looked at it and went, no, that's the space gun flipped upside down. They went, no, that's the submarine. So they got to kind of have their cake and eat it, too. Okay, that's fair. If you hold the submarine upside down and make it a gun, that's not a Hasbro. Hasbro can't control what you do with it once you buy it. But that's a submarine. Yeah. So that was really funny. And that's what I think I mean, of when I think of that sort of like, let's skirt the, what, you know what we're doing, and we know what we're doing, but the platform has to have deniability. It's an old movie trope that uh, a, a young boy, no matter what he picks up, is a gun. Mm-hmm. It could be a, a slipper, it'll it'll shoot. It could be a, a stick. Yeah. It doesn't the, matter. It, it's, an, it's always a firing projectile. The last time they did Megatron as a gun in the U.S., because they've done him in, in Japan, but... Uh, they have to do, like, a plastic orange plug that gets put in the barrel if they ship yeah. it overseas. Mm-hmm. Because Japan has different laws. Like, they have stricter gun laws, so they can have looser toy laws. America went the other way, which makes the most amount of sense. Um, of course. The last time they did Megatron as as anything like a, a gun or a weapon um, was in the, oh God, like, 2008, 6 or 8 or something. 
Um, and they did him as like a Nerf gun, basically. And that thing was bright orange. And even then, like... You know, and, Megatron's colors. Yeah, which when uh, Japan did their version of that figure, all silver. Sure. Because they're like, this, this is dumb. But yeah, after that, like every time they do, there's been a Megatron toy, like for the movies or for the, the toy lines or for the cartoons, it's always a tank or a jet or a truck or never a gun. It's never going to be a gun for U.S. domestic release. We are the Hero Initiative. Hero Initiative is the charity that helps comic book creators in medical or financial need. Superhero movies are often billion-dollar blockbusters, but many of the writers and artists who developed the characters see little or no money from that. Hero Initiative helps many of these older creators with their medical and financial needs, and now you can be the hero, too. Find out how you can donate and volunteer at heroinitiative.org. How was your day, Patrick? <laughs> Uh, my day was annoying because, once again, Diamond had a remote into the system and was on literally all day. I assume nothing got fixed. I have no idea. Probably not. He, he that, never... That screenshot you showed me is I'm taking a backup, which means nothing got fixed. He never says what is he's doing or that it's done. Sure. It, it was just, uh, with only an hour to go at the store, it still said, like, you know, and well over an hour to back up but by the time i zed out he was off the system sure everything was closed because the backup is just going to an ftp transfer and it's it'll just take three hours yeah. and they'll just get it at some uh, point I, I can't tell like friday is when i come in and within like the first 15 minutes when diamond calls it says oh hey can i get in it's like oh my god this is you know yeah i mean i had the same situation a week or two ago where it was like i can't receive this reorder i can't receive the lunar books i can't do any of the emails i was going to do because diamond has to be doing stuff to fix the scheduler which it some of the the processes worked it, it downloaded 800 something new images well, uh, which was great so that'll make sure that our shopify stuff looks okay uh, somebody notified me when was it tuesday night a customer yeah that i had neglected to create the new release page on shopify <laughs> i'd uploaded everything I made all the alterations, and then I forgot to tag all those things as new releases, so they're popular in the release section. Oh, interesting. You could still find them by searching for them. Sure. But, yeah, so that was a couple days late, because I overlooked it on a Saturday night. Things happen. I guess. I mean, um, I don't feel like I cost us thousands of dollars, but still, it was a, a dumb oversight. One of the things I hate doing with the new way we receive, let's say, Simon & Schuster specifically, mm -hmm. is that... Once you pull up the like the easiest thing to do mm -hmm. is once the invoice is checked in, mm -hmm. and then you pull up that invoice online, and then you just go down the list to say you know got this one, got this one, to got fill this in quantities, one. yeah. But whoever imports or inputs the information to Simon and Schuster changes the title of every book randomly. So Penguin Random House does the same thing. It nothing is a series, so you know if it's. Um, uh, I can't remember the exact example. I'm not sure I understand. Okay. Well, we'll try and explain it for you, Siri. Like, my example is when I was doing the Penguin Random House order on Wednesday. Like, Batman Volume 11, Fall on the Fallen or whatever, is under Batman Volume 11, f and then it cuts off. Batman Volume 1, Court of Owls, is under BMV1, Court Owls. Yeah. Why is it not Batman Volume 1? Right. Uh, and they do that all the time, and it's different spacing, different breakdowns. Sometimes they spell out a word, sometimes they don't. Yeah, there's no formal rules for how they do their titles. But in our system, they all have the exact same title. We just change the volume number, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. Because we might want to find stuff at some yeah. point. <laughs> so you have to be really strict when you're checking things in. Yep. I don't even Whilst, use the invoice when I do that, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, well, we had three different... Uh, Orders come in at the same time. I just make a stack and I take it to the register and I go, okay, this one, this one, this one. Okay. Because they're trying to decode the invoice. Yeah, it's a giant pain in the ass. Giant pain in the ass. So this this started as uh, you pointing out a mistake you made, so I thought I would reciprocate. Please. As we were going through them, um, I Gene was going through the special order book looking to see if there were any special orders. And it's the case where it's like, oh, great, you know, we got a Death Note book in. Oh, no, we got the one that we don't need. Right. Or for a special order, anyway. Mm -hmm. But 
uh, Gina had remembered that there was somebody who had a Scott Pilgrim special order, mm-hmm. but they didn't. It was crossed out, but right. she remembered seeing it in the book. Yeah. And I said, why does that matter? She's like, well, because we got Scott Pilgrim. I'm like, no, we didn't. She's like, yeah, we did. I'm like, no. Did she? I'm like, there wasn't one on the invoice. And she points to it. I'm like, what? what is... I don't understand what's going on. So I had to go <laughs> through the book, and it was SP Space Compendium. Yeah. That's how it was. That makes sense. Yeah. Nope. Also, it was volume three we got, but all I said was SP Compendium. Weird. And ultimately, I had missed that one title mm-hmm. when checking things in, because I'm like, I don't under... What are you talking about Scott Pilgrim for? I, we didn't get one. No, we did. We did. It's the new format. It's the, yeah. No, it's the soft cover. It's yeah. it's the like it's two all we can ones. Get now. Yeah. That's which is fine. I, I mean, it's and it's Nathan Fairbairn's colors. It's fine. Sure. It's just that not that's not at all how I would uh, have denoted it. No. On on any written it down in any way, shape, or a- form. SP compendium. No. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no. Uh, before we go away forever. We'll have plenty more podcasts, just not tonight. Uh, I did want to point out that um, there was a social media post today that I had made. We have a new employee. We have a, uh, the, I would say Challenger's youngest employee, but Parker was younger. But Parker didn't have set hours. Uh, Felix Challenger has officially started at Challenger's. He was in all day Thursday. It was his second day. He is younger but he's been shopping with us for a very long time his whole family has Mm -hmm. and he's very knowledgeable about the books that he reads which is a lot of of books mainly dc books he's probably our our biggest dc fan that we have on staff yeah i would argue yeah the post that i that i put up was basically like we're always trying to think of the future of comics retail and right now that future is felix (laughs) uh only i don't want it to be because he should want better things in life he really should. And, and this is not, like, uh, comic shops keep employees forever. Like, comic shop employees never want to go. And we've had people with us for 10 years. Yeah, and that's the thing that we always try to impress upon people when they, like, come and looking for a job. It's like, you know how long you're going to have to wait for something to open up? It, do- I, it doesn't happen a lot. And I feel bad because recently a lot of people have asked, and I had said, sure. no, no, no. But w- this deal with Felix has been in the works for a long time because yeah. we were waiting for... Uh, school to be over for the semester and uh, other other commitments that they had as a family and whatnot. Yeah, so, and, and I mean, I, I would also argue that like this this was not like a job that we hired Felix for. This was us finding something we could do with Felix. Yeah, because we want to have Felix on yeah. board. So and it, also, it's not like this was open to whomever. Felix wor- Felix works the like everybody for us. It's it's part time. He works a day a week. Right. Uh, it is weird that he's already. Higher than Kent in the Challengers hierarchy. Sure. But... No, I mean, it's not. That's yeah, it's, not weird. It's not, yeah. It's not. Listen to the podcast. It's not weird at all. That's um, the natural outcome of hundreds of episodes of Contest of Challengers. <laughs> is our youngest employee is now higher on the totem pole than Kent is. Andrew had complained immediately that he never got an Instagram post when he started. <laughs> and I said, well, first of all, it was a pandemic when you started. Yeah. Second of all, we're ashamed of you. Yeah. It's more number two than anything else. It gets growing into more of number yeah. two by the days. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's funny that, that yeah, we we didn't, I guess. I mean, I don't work with Andrew, so it's not my responsibility, but still, we didn't. That's true. The problem is neither you nor I work with Felix either, so no. we don't know how he's being uh, corrupted. Or yeah, I gotta assume it's not going well. I'll find out. We'll find out. We'll, we'll ask his dad. Yeah, there you go. His dad shops with us. So, if you come in on a Thursday, uh, Felix will be there and in charge. Yeah, and sure. uh, we're happy Mr. to have him. Mr. Felix. I, I so believe we're... Felix is... is uh, I don't know that he plans to stay after the summer. It all depends on school. I don't know what grade he's going into. I don't know a lot about him. He, I, I'm starting to wonder why we hired this person. Bit of a black box. Yeah, I, I, feel, I mean, does that mean he has to crash and we have he, to he pry into him? He won't mask happened? in that photo. So, I mean, even then, I, who knows who that is. Sure. But also, he's young. But is he that young to wear a mask? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's I, I mostly just meant because he was obscuring his face. Oh, I, I see. I think he's totally fine to wear a mask if he wants to wear a mask for any reason. Of course. Not, I'm just not saying. wading into that. But I don't know anything about him, and also I can't see his face. It's just that... Vaccines are open for anybody 12 and above mm-hmm. now. I hope he's older than 12. And if he is older than 12, he's older than you were when you 
We got hired. It's true. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about Felix. And we're not talking about Felix because we're done. Thanks for listening. Keep reading comics. This has been Contest of Challengers. Thanks for listening. Keep reading comics. Challengers is located at 1845 Northwestern Avenue in the Bucktown neighborhood of Chicago. 773-278-0155. Keep up to date with new releases and events at challengerscomics.com. Like Challengers Comics on Facebook, follow at Challengers on Twitter, and help fund this podcast at patreon.com slash challengers.